Hi. So RBI recently had a monetary policy meet in which they announced that they will keep the repo rate unchanged. But what are these monetary policy tools that RBI uses to manage the money supply? That's going to be our topic of discussion in this particular video. My name is Piyush and I welcome all of you once again to another video on our channel. If you haven't subscribed to it as yet, please do that right away. Let's dive right into what are these monetary policy tools that the RBI or any central bank can use to manage the money supply in the banking system, right? So what are these tools? Typically, there are three broad sets of tools that are there. There are reserve ratios, there are policy rates, and there are open market operations. We'll look at them one by one. To understand this better, you may also need a sense of how does the banking system work. We actually have a video on that in terms of how to evaluate banks. The link of that is also put up in the description. If you go through that, you'll get a sense of how the central bank has to control the banking system and what are the points where these rates or these policy tools kind of intervene with the banking system. Let's first understand the need of some of these. So we'll start first up with reserve ratios. There are two types of reserve ratios that we look at. There is something called as CRR that stands for cash reserve ratio. There's something called as SLR that stands for statutory liquidity ratio. Now, what's the logic of these ratios or these uh, reserves that a bank has to keep with, uh, with RBI or in some form or fashion? That a bank typically accepts deposits, right? And lends out this money to borrowers. So there are loans given out on the other side. Now, the depositors have given the money to the bank, but there's no fixed timeline. I can go tomorrow to a bank and take all my money out, right? So the bank doesn't know for how long the deposits are there barring, let's say, some fixed deposits, but technically I can break those as well, right? So deposits are typically for a shorter tenure, but the loans that the bank has given out could be for a longer tenure. You know, home loan could be a 20-year loan, you know, term loan to a corporate could be a five-year loan. So the loan tenure is defined and usually long-term. The deposit tenure is short-term. This is what is commonly known as an asset liability mismatch. Now, this could create a liquidity issue because if you've taken the money in terms of deposits and given out all of it as loans, Tomorrow, if a depositor turns up on the banking branch and says, give my money, maybe the bank doesn't have the money, right? To avoid this scenario or this liquidity crisis, what RBI says is you have to keep some part of the money in the form of reserves, right? So as we speak at this point of time, CRR stands at 4%, SLR stands at 18%. CRR stands for cash reserve ratio, which means if a depositor has put in 100 rupees with the bank, 4% of that, which is 4 rupees, has to be kept aside as cash with RBI. RBI does not pay any interest on these. Because RBI does not pay any interest on this, this is like a cash reserve money sitting idle from the bank's perspective. So that's 4 rupees gone. The other 18%, which is SLR, or 18 rupees out of every 100 rupees, is going to be kept in the form of very liquid bonds. These are typically government bonds or gold that can be sold immediately and money can be raised immediately in the case of a liquidity requirement. So out of 100 rupees, 22 rupees, 4 plus 18 is put aside as reserves. Now in the last policy meet, RBI actually has announced that they're going to cut CRR from 4% to 3% in stages by the end of this calendar year. I'll talk about what's that implication of that and you know, how does that kind of impact the banking system. But very intuitively, you have 100 rupees of deposits, you put 22 rupees as reserves, simplistically put your remaining 78 can be loaned out. If the RBI increases reserve ratios, if reserves go from 22 to 25, you have lesser money to lend. Lesser money to lend will mean lower money supply. Lower money supply will mean higher cost of money or higher interest rates. If the RBI were to cut down these rates, let's say 22 becomes 20, then you have more money to lend money supply increases, interest rates will effectively come down in the economy. So that's how the RBI would use the reserve ratios. Now, to understand the implication of this 1% cut in CRR that is announced, the total deposit base, the total deposit base in the country is 230 trillion rupees, approximately, give or take a few at this point of time. That's 230 lakh crore. 4% of that is to be put aside as CRR. There's a 1% reduction in the CRR. That will basically mean 1% of that amount gets released to the banking system. That's 2 lakh 30,000 crore. Right? Remember, there is no cost to this money because deposits are already taken and you're paying for the deposits uh, as a bank. This money was not earning any interest. Now this has come back into the banking fold. 
So banks actually have an extra 2,30,000 crore available to them to lend. Even if you were to lend that at somewhere between, let's say, lend it or invest it in government securities at a 6% rate, 2,30,000 crore into 6%. So you'll have 14,000 odd crore. So 14,000 to 15,000 crore will be your approximate profit that you will get out of this, right? 2,30,000 crore into about 6 to 7%. Approximately 15,000 crore of extra profitability can be earned, extra interest can be earned. And because there's no cost attached to this, there's just a straight flow to the bottom line. The entire banking system stands to gain this amount on an aggregate basis in the coming years, right? So that's the construct that we look at. How does the reserve ratios kind of work out? Which brings us to the next part, which is the policy rates. Now, these are the commonly used ones that we keep hearing about. There is something called as repo which stands for repurchase agreement. Repo is the rate at which RBI lends money to banks for the short term, right? But it's not a straightforward lending and that's why the term repo is used. What happens is the bank sells some securities to RBI and gets the money from RBI, right? And at a later part, later point of time, the bank repurchases those securities while repaying the money and hence the term repo rate if repo rate goes up, RBI is giving money to the banks at a higher rate. That's an indication to banks that you need to raise rates at your end as well, both for lending and for borrowing. Correct? That's the context of how the repo rate works. The exact opposite of this is what used to be called as reverse repo, where RBI would sell bonds and then repurchase that and banks would give money and then take that money back. So if banks had excess cash, RBI would sell bonds, take that money out and so on and so forth. But What's happened is because of the movement of bonds, RBI got restricted if they did not have any bonds, right? So what RBI did instead is they introduced a rate called Standing Deposit Facility, SDF, Standing Deposit Facility, which is now just a simple deposit facility that if a bank has excess cash, they can put it as a deposit to RBI and get a certain amount of interest. As we speak, repo is at 5.5%. SDF is 25 basis points lower because RBI pays lower than what it gets, right? So 5.25% and they move generally move in tandem. So if they cut repo by another 25 basis points, SDF will also get cut by 25 basis points. Repo does not have an endless sort of a supply, right? So if a bank is borrowing on repo, they can't just go around borrowing as much as they want on repo. Uh, there's a limit which is standing, you know, based on the total deposit base, a certain percentage of that can be borrowed as repo. If a bank needs emergency funding over and above that, there is another rate called MSF, Marginal Standing Facility. This is a slightly higher rate, 5.75%. And if a bank needs emergency funding from RBI, they will take this at MSF, which is 5.75%. Together, these rates are called the Policy Corridor under the liquidity adjustment facility. And when RBI is changing them, they typically, the, cor the entire corridor changes accordingly, right? Now, what's the logic of changing them or keeping them in this corridor is that, think about it, if a bank needs to borrow urgently, they don't have to pay anything more than 5.75 to any other entity because RBI is giving them money at 5.75. And if a bank has a lot of money that they have to lend, they don't need to lend it at anything below 5.25 because RBI is giving 5.25, no questions asked, right? So the, the it ensures that the system rates actually move between 5.25 and 5.75. And RBI kind of moves this in terms of looking at what their inflation targeting is. If, it, if inflation is under their control, they'll try and keep bringing these rates down. If inflation spikes up, they will take these rates up. When rates go up, interest rates go up, money supply comes down, that sort of uh, reduces the growth in the economy and controls the inflation. When rates come down, uh, money supply increases, borrowing becomes easier, and consequently that increases the growth in the economy. That's how policy rates would kind of work in the context of banking operations. The third tool is what is called as open market operations. Under open market operations, RBI is basically buying bonds, so RBI buys bonds, or RBI sells bonds. Now, very simply put, if we consider a lot of banks and let's say RBI is buying bonds from them, RBI will be giving money to the banks. So that is going to increase the money supply. As money supply goes up, cost of money goes down. 
You can also think of it another way. When RBI buys more bonds, the demand for bonds goes up. So the bond prices, right? Bond prices will go up. If bond prices go up, bond yields, which is the return you make on the bonds, will go down. Yields are a direct reflection of interest rates. So interest rates go down when RBI is buying a lot more bonds. If RBI is selling a lot more bonds, then it is taking out liquidity from the banking system. So money supply will go down. Interest rates will effectively move up. What can happen is RBI is selling bonds, lots of bond supply. So bond prices, you can also look at it this way. Bond prices will go down. Prices going down will mean yields will go up. Yields going up is basically nothing but interest rates going up in the economy. So sometimes even with all the policy rates and all, the actual rates in the markets might be moving around a little bit and RBI might be concerned about what's the liquidity situation. So they can buy or sell bonds in the open market to control what's the interest rate in the economy. That's how RBI uses these tools, reserve ratios, repo rate, uh, which are policy rates and open market operations. We recently had a policy meet. So if you note the statement, the exact statement that comes out and that is after assessing the current and evolving macroeconomic situation, the MPC. What is the MPC? Monetary Policy Committee, right? There are six members in this uh, and they sort of take a decision combined together. They meet six times a year. Every two months, there is a monetary policy review. And they said that they are maintaining the policy repo rate at 5.5. Consequently, the standing deposit facility is at 5.25. The liquidity adjustment facility under the liquidity adjustment facility and MSF remains at 5.75. The decision is in consonance with the objective of achieving medium term target for consumer price inflation index at 4% plus minus 2%. That's their band on which they are working out. I urge you to go and read this report. This is available on the RBI website. Take a look at this. It will give you an idea about what the policy making is like, why are they doing it and so on and so forth. These are the three major tools that RBI uses, reserve ratios, policy rates and open market operations. RBI obviously has a lot of other tools up their sleeve, but that's a topic for discussion in another video. That's it in this particular video. Thanks a lot for watching this and please leave your feedback in the comment section. Thank you.